and welcome to Dialogue and Young Ray Beijing. Following the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2008 Beijing Olympics and the APEC Summit in 2014, Chinese director Zhang Yimou has once again brought a remarkable performance with strong Chinese characteristics to the attention of the wider world with the G20 Gala Show in Hangzhou. How has Zhang Yimou become so important to these occasions in introducing Chinese culture to the world? And how should we look at the show from the perspective of promoting Chinese culture generally? And what needs to be done to improve and expand the telling of Chinese stories from a Chinese point of view? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined in the Beijing studio by Han Hua, a culture critic, and Fazan Kamalabadi, president of the Future Trans Group. But before we begin our discussion here, let's take a look at this. A grand symphony concert and gala on water, something that has never been done before. Yet for the gala producer Sha Xiaolan, the unpredictable weather can make or break an open-air show. About four hours before the show, there was a heavy rain in Hangzhou. We thought about putting up a shelter over the orchestra, but it took over eight hours to assemble, and we have to make a decision fast. But after I discussed with Zhang, our general director, we agreed that it would affect the final show, so we took a risk of not assembling the roof. One of the climatic moment of the night, a reinterpretation of classic ballet Swan Lake. For director Zhang Yimou, it's the perfect opportunity to blend the classic with modern technology. We are always joking about saying, "At least let Putin see what he didn't see." I think it's the first time for the ballet classic Swan Lake to be staged literally on water, one of the most famous lakes in China, with all that history behind it. And the real question is how to make it stand out from other versions. We used to joke about it, saying we have to at least make Putin grin at the show. We've done a lot of preparation. Like putting a non-slit mat on the floor, and I believe it's the first time that anyone had attempted to dance ballet in water. We, besides the actors, have to dance well. We also need to see something unique. That actually, here there is a high-tech technology. There is also the dance choreography. It's not just the dance choreography that we have to think about, but also how to use high tech to make our vision come true. Like the use of hologram really adds to the piece's mysterious and dreamy feel, where reality and illusion blend together. The gala is unique in a way that it showcases our culture. Just like this year's G20 summit, this gala serves to bridge differences between cultures and for people to reach common ground. Well, uh, the uh, gala. However successful from the Chinese perspective, maybe a little bit controversial.、Mm -hmm. Some people accuse Zhang Yimou of moving a big number of people around the stage with such a, a sweep in a military way、mm -hmm. that he failed to focus on the skills and performance of individuals.、Mm -hmm. In sharp contrast with the real Olympic opening and the closing ceremonies with a low budget, what do you think of the controversies here? Well, this is just how large our population base is. You know, just telling from the online websites. But I think Zhang Yimou is not. You know, he 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 does not himself does not have this kind of capability. He himself once said he's just an ordinary people. He cannot go directly to all the ministries to ask for these resources. He's like burdened or given this kind of capability of moving people around and utilizing the high technology. This is, you know, part of the Chinese characteristics, isn't that? You know that when we face every big events and campaign, we are able the national is like top on、um, from top on down, you know, to move the people around and put everyone's efforts together to make the event, the campaign, a very successful one. Don't you think、uh, those critics、uh, who accuse Dan Yimou of mobilizing large number of people in this way? 
examined the show through an ideological lens. They have politicized the show somehow. Yes, actually he did a balance. In the beginning it was just a pipa, it was one single. Mm -hmm. So there was a actually individual, and uh, throughout the show also there were individual cases. But the point is that China has 1.5 billion population and a large scale, uh, it's not a military style, it is called uh, what they call very organized and systematic, is part of the culture of the Asia in general. Uh, because in fact, those critics the were referring back to mm -hmm. the Beijing Olympic Games, the opening ceremony, yeah. uh, you know, drumming the beat. The, yeah. the no, I think people are more afraid of North Korea when they do a large scale, really, about I mean, parade. tens of yeah. thousands of people parades, and to them, that is communism. It's too much command and orderly, and so when they see that, get a little bit scared. But actually, if you balance it, and which Jaimo did, he did the hard and the soft. He did the water, the air, and also the modern. So I think yeah. he tried his best to do the balance. Oh, let's put it this way. For the Beijing Olympic, I think Zhang Yimou is a successful marketer. Why we, uh, why we said so? Because in the Beijing Olympic Games, the opening ceremony is targeting a much larger audience. The Olympics itself is a fun, energetic games. But whereas G20 is, is the political superpowers uh, discussing or tackling the political and economic issues or challenges around the world. So you have to get this balance through the gala show instead of targeting a large scale of audience. So this time he tried, it, we can feel that he tried to balance it through the shows. Instead of, you know, all moving people around, you have some solo shows as well, so it's, it's, it's a kind of balance. But uh, Mr. Shimon Peres, a former uh, president of Israel, mm -hmm. said a country capable of organizing such a major event would get whatever done in whatever ways. So he's, uh, he was praising the strength of uh, such a potential uh, prospective uh, superpower. The show was a fusion of Eastern and Western cultural elements. Many Chinese instruments were used in cooperation with an orchestra and both classic Chinese and world classical music were performed. Uh, Fazan, how do you think this helps to improve the global audience viewing experience? I think the mode or the motto for the new future world civilization that China represents is called Gu Jin Zhong Wai, ancient and modern and east and the west. So you have the old instruments and old culture and tradition but yet in a modern rendering with the 3Ds with the projections, holograms, and in the future we go to the vir virtual world. So he did very well as far as Gu Jin, also in Zhong Wai, trying to make it a, a modern rendering. Uh, some arts, it cannot be done, like Chinese calligraphy, you cannot make it modern. I mean, it is very ancient and it is like Chinese characters. But music you can. You can make it interweaving, like the clothes, right. tapestry. Mm -hmm. You can easily put the elements of the minority tribes to a modern for example, form of a uh, classic design of clothing. In clothing, you can do that. In music, definitely, you can weave very well. So he did a good job. In general, the famous yeah. Westlake boasts of, uh, boasts of a long poetic history. And in fact, Xihu uh, or Westlake is also called Xizi, which is the name of uh, one of the four most beautiful ladies in our classical Chinese literature. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of the message that uh, Zhang Yimou tried to deliver in uh, organizing the shows, uh, namely the tranquility, serenity, and the tenderness of the locals and local culture. The show, uh, I, I like my most favorite part of the show is that it took, uh, director Zhang Yimou took Westlake as a very majestic background. The background that I have never seen Westlake is presented this way. I you was are from born, Hangzhou. I was born in Hangzhou near you know Westlake. Yes, so it is a very hometown. good opportunity for me to promote you know Hangzhou in this studio. And I think I, I was amazed, you know, by seeing the show that she uh, Westlake is presented this way. This the most memorable in Hangzhou is the title of this show. And there is another very famous poem and in which the line is described Westlake at this way, whether it is richly adorned or plainly dressed, uh, it is it is always the beautiful, the charming Westlake or Lady Westlake. So I think the show presents the a richly adorned Westlake. And in this way, it is kind of successful. 
all the actors and actresses are on the stage for Yue Ju, the Yue Opera, would come across as uh, females. So people start to take issue with the femininity. What do you think of this, uh, uh, you know, critical stuff? In fact, I think not just Jiang Yimou. But the choice of Hangzhou for mm -hmm. such a major event, not Beijing, not like the mm, command center, that by itself is very wise. Mm -hmm. China has 33 provinces, 500 big cities, thousands of small cities. Each one of them are very unique, and the world doesn't know about them. Mm -hmm. I think we know a lot about Hangzhou, Suzhou, even sometimes Zhuhai, but most of the people of the world, for them it was new, probably. And so it is very good, the choice of the place. And because Hangzhou and Suzhou are soft, genuine, meticulous, uh, it's like a very light form of music, not harsh form of, I think that showed, showcased basically the gentleness and mm -hmm. softness of the Chinese spirit, which is the south of China is about. Yes, one more sentence to add. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting perspective. Plus, water, what is the symbol of Hangzhou okay. is West Lake. It's the water, and the water as a natural element is always conveying the message of Chinese philosophy to be balanced, to be more harmonious, and, and soft to be flowing. Soft, flowing, soft flowing, to be floating, and yeah. flexible, yeah. and the flexible. But in fact, <laughs> the five elements. In fact, the American Indians they say that the element of fire is represented by the West, mm -hmm. which created the engine, and. Well, it is very positive, could be also, because it's a source of civilization, but it could also be harsh. Whereas the Chinese are more the element of qi, or mm. the air, or water. We say, shang shan ruo shui. We say, the, the highest form of goodness is softness. Or the highest form of virtue is softness. I even say more than that. They say, zhi shan ruo qi. The highest and higher form of that is softness of the air. So music and basically ballet and all of those softnesses, I think they purposely try to show. Mm -hmm. However, those who are very critical of Chinese culture would say, look, you guys lay too much emphasis on the integrity of being flexible, mm -hmm. as opposed to the dichotomy in Western culture. They tend to examine things in black and white terms instead of being a little bit too flexible. That's why President Obama said, it's the United States that should write the rules for world trade, not China. Mm -hmm. Because the Chinese, in his understatement, after perhaps watching the gala in Hangzhou, uh, insist that being too flexible means you but choose just to you ignore just the said, rules. Yeah. No. But just you no. just said that they blame China for being too rigid, like a military <laughs> stride of Halak Parade. So whatever we do, there's somebody who will be critical. Let's be yourself and be natural and show all the goodness that you yes. have and let the world admire the goodness. Yeah. And if you have negative things yourself, like a mirror, change yourself. And I always think that this is, you know, what you said is uh, President Obama's statement is like the American version of globalization. Come on, it's globalization 1.0. And I think the <laughs> globalization 2.0 should be more creative and more integrated with each other. It's not a cu culture dominating another culture or an economy or superpower dominating another Superpower. Let's be fair, President Obama <laughs> was very positive about the show, by the yes. way. He liked the okay. show. He yeah. was yeah. impressed by the opening mm. ceremony. Mm. Yeah. That's Look, good to know. <clears throat> there is no competition. We should always forget about that there is a competition between America or China or the West and the right. East. The competition is the old mold. We are too, too much used to it. Right. You know, but when we see unity and diversity, everyone is happy. All the cultures and have civilizations have something. Excuse me, to but you and cannot prevent people from uh, drawing comparison. For example, uh -huh. many people like the show very much, but some were critical. Do you think this has something to do with uh, our high expectations from Zhang Yimou after watching the real uh, Olympic ceremony, uh, the opening ceremony in uh, Brasilia, yeah. um, with low budget? Um, mm -hmm. Fewer people than the number of guys that Zhang Yimou mobilized uh, in both the Beijing Olympic Games and for this. You can say the difference down. is like Oscar when the big budget money, 50, 70 million mm -hmm. US dollars, wins the gold, or Iranian t movie with only half a million dollars exactly. and it wins also the gold award. So both of them have merit. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that it's not to say simplicity is best. Sometimes you need the grandeur, sometimes you need sincerity. Exactly. Uh, simplicity. Yeah, so speaking, I think speaking of controversy, uh, the next day I immediately, you know, took a look of the NBC's website, remembering how a magnificent job they did for the Beijing Olympics opening ceremonies broadcast. Everyone said NBC's 
you know, trying to convey the real message of Zhang Yimou's opening ceremony. Mm -hmm. And the, the headline of this gala show of G20 is that a spectacular uh, show of dancing on water. Let's watch it. So that's, if that is controversial, I, I think that raises something and that tells something. Thank you very much. You are watching Dialogue with uh, Madam Han Hua and uh, Father Kamala Badi. We're discussing both the success and controversies surrounding the opening ceremony of the just concluded G20 summit in Hangzhou. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay with us. Welcome back. We live in the age of digital technology. So let's take a look at the uh, technological aspects of the production that Zhang Yimou delivered. Um, it was impressive. Uh, lighting, including effects such as the folding fan that formed the circle in the water's reflection, the submerged stage that allowed the dance on the water, and the use of uh, hologram ballerinas. How impressive are they on their own, and how effectively were they combined with human and other natural elements to enhance the storytelling, the over, overall impression? Well, this part, I think China has been lagging behind in the new technology innovation and invention for almost maybe over a century. So not only Zhang Yimou, but maybe other cultural content producers, they're trying to use, they're trying too hard to use this uh, high technology or new technologies to, to decorate the, the cultural product itself. Sometimes it's, it's, it's too much. So. For this, I'm holding my own opinion as to maybe sometimes you need to more, more is less, le less is better. So I think maybe it's too much. It's like the height of this kind of national event or gala shows utilizing high new technologies. And it's good, but down the road, shall we you know, get back to the simplicity or the content or the quality of the show in themselves that we can present the audience a more real content or combination of Western essence and the Eastern essence of the cultures. That leaves an open question. Chinese people have long been known for being hospitable. For example, we invite friends to have a family dinner, many dishes, a little bit too much. That's why Helen said uh, more is less or the other way around. This time around, so much money has been spent on the opening ceremony. At the same time, the critics uh, accuse Zhang Yimou and those behind him of ignoring up to eight, 18 million impoverished population in this country. They say the money should have been spent on poverty alleviation and we should have learned from uh, Rio de Janeiro where the simplicity uh, of the opening and closing ceremonies uh, have appealed to the mind and the heart of an international audience. What do you think of uh, such a, a sharp and ironic comparison? Well, ironic simplicity, comparison? but if it becomes very unique, it shows the ability for what we call creativity or innovation or... So you, you are with less tools and you have to therefore create a miracle mm -hmm. out of limited resources. Mm -hmm. That in itself has merit. Uh, I always try to balance. Mm -hmm. I believe now the world, we are 30% in real, sorry, we are 70% in the real world, 30% in virtual world. Soon the whole world will be 70% in the virtual and 30% in the real. So the fact to try to use digital itself is good. Yeah. But how well you can combine, and as you said, how, how you can use little tools to accomplish miraculous results that's the example of Rio de Janeiro. Um, I wonder if you guys have followed Zhang Yimou's uh, uh, recent production of the Impression series, like Impression mm -hmm. Li Jiang, another spectacular show performed outdoors with the backdrop of the Yunnan Mountains. The show depicts the life and aspirations of many native Chinese ethnic groups in mm -hmm. a moving and entertaining way with moments of emotional focus and detail in addition to large set pieces. In what ways can we consider this to be part of the evolution of a universal storyteller? Because uh, we are expected by, for example, President Xi Jinping to tell a good Chinese story. <laughs> now, is this in a very artistic way, the impression list to impress the world? <laughs> the impression series were conceived and produced uh, back about 10 years ago or even longer. So back then, it was okay. Or 
it was a successful formula in, to utilize the Chinese content, especially the ethnic group's content, mm -hmm. with the Western quote-unquote plate or technology to present the world a, an exo exotic and interesting, a fresh China. But after 10 years, after a decade of this kind of efforts, I would say that the gala show in Hangzhou has reached the ever height of this kind of experiments or telling the story. So it's a new version should be conceived. And you mean it's uh, enough? Yeah. Enough is <laughs> yeah. enough. It's reached the height. Yeah. Maybe well, there should be other dimensions or other ways, first, first other ways to try, uh, to some, some innovative ways to try to tell the story in some other ways. You mean we should ways. have uh, changed the movie director with someone else? Mm. <laughs> uh, but Zhang Yimou enjoys very good fame through his previous films. So, in terms of fail, fame and the telling the story, Chinese story to the world, he's still a very strong candidate. But can we open the doors to other candidates to, to have a try? Yes, I indeed. Think we can. a powerful symbol of the fifth generation of the Chinese movie directors uh, yeah. in the early days of China's opening up. He impressed but, the in, in domestic audience with the, the Red series, like the Red yeah. Lantern and the Red yeah. Sorghum. There is a reason. I knew his master teacher, Mr. Uh, Wu Tianming, very uh -huh. well. I knew him from 30 years ago from Los Angeles, very close. And he was more simplicity. Well, like lodging. I showed his firm right. for the first time in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, what I believe, first of all, China in general doesn't need to impress anyone. You just show who you are. Right. Be who you are and show who you are. But China is so diverse. It is the country of sounds and colors and tapestry and minorities and mountains and the mountains that are, are unreal. To exaggerate and to show it is okay. But to do it every single time, then it is not. Mm -hmm. It becomes like too much of eating the same food. Right. So I think China has a lot of new places and new things to show to the world, uh, but you should balance it with sometimes, as you said, go to micro. Like for example, China has painting on the hair or mm -hmm. on the rice that you multiply 50,000 times and it becomes a regular painting. Mo most of the people of the world don't know about it. Mm. Upon his so graduation, Zhang Yimou uh, came across as a cameraman instead of uh, being a movie director. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, Yellow Earth was uh, released in the Chinese cinemas, he, he, um, uh, he gave a different account about uh, why and how this movie was directed. No, he was the light expert. Chen Kai-ge was the movie director, exactly. he the cameraman. Right. And Chen Kai-ge wanted very much to inject strong elements of Chinese philosophy into the use of different uh, colors, particularly the yellow color. Mm -hmm. So when the political commissar appeared from the skyline, uh, it injected a silver lining into the poverty-stricken, underdeveloped areas in the uh, Loetus, uh, the, the yellow earth. Mm -hmm. So when I was uh, discussing with Zhang Yimou myself, mm -hmm. Uh, when he was directing Yigo Bonoshao, nobody should be absent. Okay. He said, oh, that's exaggeration. I'm oh, just okay. uh, a cameraman. I, I, I don't talk about the philosophy like Chen Kai Ge. Mm. Chen Kai Ge is known for being very philosophical, try to be deep and yeah, profound. Right. Uh, he laughed at Chen Kai Ge's mm. uh, you know, uh, skills and approach. What do you think of their own uh, different personality? So I think, first of all, Zhang Yimou was actually not just cameraman, he was the director of lighting under the Wu Tianming. So, and he became famous because of that. In the early times, China was black and white. I remember mm -hmm. when I came to China, even advertisements were black and white, streets were blank and white, there were not much advertisements. So he came early on and because of lightings and the lantern, he became famous, so, so he kept it. Yeah, right. And people encouraged him more, and then became as more grander and more colorful. And, and the, in Hollywood also, they had not seen mm -hmm. China in that light. So I think he's gotten to become too singular. Right. So in fact, he should not criticize Chiang kai -ge. I think, as you said, we should, leadership is when you replace yourself. Yeah, right. So he should let the younger generation Chinese artists sometimes go and tell the story of exactly. only one youth. Yeah. The world doesn't mm -hmm. know about the inner intriguing mindset of the Chinese, their mm -hmm. ambitions, what do they want to accomplish in life? What is their dreams? What is their uh, contribution to the world? Do they have a sense of destiny or mission? Or are they selfish? Many, many small, tiny stories. The West is good at this. They sometimes go to a very documentary and real story and make it very dramatic. And they go to some very dramatic story and make it very simple, <laughs> like Forrest Gump. So I think Chinese sophistication of 
art itself and expressing that art in a modern way is still not there. Yes, in, indeed, we are very proud of our own traditional culture, mm -hmm. ranging from literature uh, to tea and the craftsmanship as yes. well as architectural uh, skills mm -hmm. to see nothing of TCM. Right. Uh, but what about modern times? So let's look at our neighboring countries, Japan and South Korea. In Japan, the uh, animation, animation industry yes. sells so good. Uh, it's a, such a big, lucrative industry. And in our neighboring country of South Korea, the pop culture, pop shows, uh, soap operas, uh, appealed so much to housewives in China <laughs> that they became crazy. They were driven mad by housewives some of the superstars. Housewives in Iran also, in and Korea. in Turkey also, in yeah, many countries. They enjoy the yes, shows from sure, Korea, Korea and yes. Japan. So what do you think of their ability to tell yes. their own individual stories? Okay. Mm. Uh, we are encouraged, we are encouraged to develop our cultural industry. Mm. Uh, it's part of the service industry that I should account for more than 50% of the GDP here. Personally, mm -hmm. I don't like so much mm -hmm. Japanese animation. Mm -hmm. The art, the expression, the character. Mm -hmm. Is it the because stories. you are too old? <laughs> no. I somehow like. Ask your kids. No, no, no. Yeah. They like even, the even, animation. No, okay. they like US. Still, US leads by far leading edge. So, innovation, creativity, creating it's more personalities. Like an that, and popularity. That exactly. Somehow, mm -hmm. somehow. You know, uh, Father, your defiance against Japan would appeal to the nationalist who dislike the Japanese. No, no, I like Japan. I like, like Japan. Japan. Oh, no, okay. I, the, the I got you wrong. Sorry, Father. China no. has so much to offer. Japan's offering. empress, yeah. uh, Masako Owada, was my best friend at the oh, Harvard University okay. area, so era, that period. So, so what is I, the most effective way of uh, conveying the message about China's soft power uh, with the rapid expansion of Chinese economy? Uh, we have to uh, impress the world with uh, an objective depiction of what we are good at, uh, such as uh, traditional values. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking of the tactics, I think one ready platform is the Confucius Institute around the world. But in, in, in the United States, the construction of Confucius colleges yeah. uh, drew a lot of criticism. Exactly. But because in Africa, they, they it's only, a big story. Yeah, uh, they big only have story. a one settled agenda. That right. is that is not feasible. In different countries, if you want to tell the Chinese stories, maybe the ways, the approaches can be different. Um, and it cannot be an institute just teaching the Chinese languages. Mm -hmm. It can be used as a platform, a very diversified, diversified platform, like to exhibit Chinese young art, art, artworks and to show the Chinese films and the combine the efforts from the culture ministry, from the other, the, the history departments, to show the real essence of the Chinese culture instead of just telling you know, the Chinese Ironically, language. Ironically, we should have learned more from Hollywood, which delivered Mulan, as well as exactly. Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Thank you very much for your participation. With that, we come Thank to the end of this discussion us. about the opening ceremony of G20 Summit in Hangzhou, particularly the success and controversy surrounding the, the style and the skills of Zhang Yimou. See you next time. Goodbye.